everyone. Today I'm working on the truck, doing some electrical stuff in the parking lot of Home Depot. Last year I set up a alternator charging system that goes from the truck to the camper. It runs dual 40 amp Renergy chargers and it's been working great for us. However, it's summertime now. It's about 85 degrees today and it's been in the 90s. And the problem I'm having is these breakers, they get hot from the heat in the air, from the engine heat, and they trip. This one is fine. This one constantly trips, even at low temperatures. So I think it's just starting to fail, but it, it highlights the fact that using breakers in the engine bay doesn't always work. It gets too hot, they trip. So my solution is to use fuses. And I did a whole bunch of shopping and I found exactly what I was looking for, which is uh, inline fuses. They're called terminal fuses. I'll show you. All right, this is a Blue Sea MRBF, which is Marine Rated Block Fuse. So the issue that I was having is all of my power comes in through this kind of umbilical cord here. My negatives go off to this, which is fine, but this got a little messy. And as usual, this was a kind of a rush job in a parking lot last year. I'll leave a link to the video up here. I need to have a fuse in between the main power source and you know the run. This is fused for four gauge wire and actually four gauge can handle slightly more than 70 amps but my connector, which I'll show you, these things that go into the camper are rated for 70 amps so I decided to fuse for 70 amps. I have my fuses in here, I have another pigtail wire here that goes to this and there's a million ways to do this and this is just how I ended up doing it with the parts that I had. So after a lot of thought, I decided that it would be nice to have the fuses directly attached here so that I can just connect it to the terminal. So I started looking for terminal fuses and of course I found exactly what I was looking for. So this, this bus bar is going to get replaced with this slightly larger bus bar that also has integrated fuses. And those integrated fuses look like this. They clamp onto the terminal and then your cable clamps onto the other side and it's kind of all in one piece. Now the downside is these were really nice because I can turn them off and on which is exceptionally handy with these. When I unplug this I have bare conductors Right now these would be live, except I'm able to turn the breakers off. Now with fuses, I won't be able to turn these off. But we take the camper off very rarely, and our biggest issue is that if I end up sitting in traffic for more than two or three minutes, the engine heat builds up, especially right up in here, in these trip. So if I'm not continuously moving, this one will definitely trip, this one trips occasionally. So with the AC going on a 95 degree day, engine heat, road heat, all of that stuff, these keep tripping. So anyways, for now, I'm going to just swap all of this out with that. So this is still live. It's directly connected to the battery and this is a pain to get off. It also messes with my, my electrical system in the truck. So I'm actually going to I'm sure this is probably not the right thing to do. I'm going to take it off with it live and I'm going to wrap it in electrical tape. And I'm almost out of this so Sasha's going to go get me some more in the store. So now this is completely off. No power here. And I really like this wrench. Um, it's a cheap Stanley that I got years ago. It extends out to use it as a breaker bar. The head pivots, um, which is nice when you get it into a weird angle, but I really love the fact that I can do this with it. I'm sure there's a special name for this. I don't know what it is. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Get out the handy dandy Leatherman. Let's 
save this. I got these little bolts to do. Hey, these circuit breakers still work. They're only giving me trouble because of the heat in the engine bay. So I'm probably gonna hang on to them. I'll probably use them inside. I don't know, I just keep them. They're expensive, still works. Might as well use them. So to give you an idea of how this works, you have a connection on this side, and you have a connection on this side. And then you have this base plate of prefamulated amulite that's separated from the center post by the panometric fam. Plastic, I assume. And this becomes the piece that bridges that gap. When you put your cable on top of that, it, it completes the connection. Whereas this side is different. This is your main connection, your battery cable. This is just, there's no, no insulator in there. So it just, it saves all that space of all the breakers and everything, and these won't overheat and trip. This has become a real issue for us. Uh, uh. This has become a real issue for us. It's constantly tripping and it's driving me nuts because I'm not getting as much charging out of the batteries as I'd like. So one thing I didn't think to check is if the hood will close. Yeah, it has plenty of room. That's good. Some electrical tape. Thank you. They didn't really have a ton of tape, but this That's perfect. Be a better deal. I think I actually, I think I used all mine. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So that sits nice neutrally. This will also have to be inverted. I'll do something like that, that'll work. this goes back on and I believe you just break or bend these tabs out of the way it looks like these bend it's not just snapping they're they're perforated right here and I think it's so that you can bend it out of the way yeah that's kind of nice look at that So I'll do the same on this one. This cover feels super brittle, but I guess it's not, it's flexible. I don't know, something like that. So this is basically the finished product. If I did something wrong here, let me know. One thing I do want to comment on is the use of this between these two terminals could be rather dangerous. What I've been doing is making sure that I angle it up and I use my fingers to protect it, but I could wrap this in electrical tape to protect the potential of shorting these two connections. They also sell some composite tools that are non-conductive that I've been looking at. I am by no means a professional so I'm gonna get my tester. I'm gonna not start the truck. I'm just gonna run it off the batteries and see if everything works the way it's supposed to. I'm only seeing 18 amps. That is not right. 
I cleaned up all of the, the tools in the engine bay. I'm just going to fire this up. I think the problem is without the voltage, the, the chargers aren't going to pull much amperage. So I'm going to turn them on. And I'm looking for about 100, 110 amps running through this. And that is not what I'm getting. So what had happened was my lithium batteries are completely charged. So the BMS shut off the charging circuit, so it wasn't doing anything. Um, I turned the air conditioner on to create a draw. And basically I'm running the air conditioner off of the truck right now. So the batteries were completely full, thus the chargers weren't going to output any amperage. So anyways, it works. Um, I'll have to keep an eye on it, but I don't think I'm going to have to reset breakers anymore. So that'll be a huge, huge uh, bonus for me. All right, so it's been in the mid-90s for the last few days, and today it's finally cooled down. It's in the 80s somewhere. It's pretty nice. And I have the camper off the truck, which is going to let me show you a few more of the details about the cabling and things like that. But for me, the real success story right now is that I haven't had to reset the breakers at all. Uh, these fuses have worked exactly as I'd hoped. So back under the hood here, this has worked out extremely well. If you guys end up buying one of these for any use, I will say I was concerned with bending these tabs back, but they are really, really strong. When I had first done it, they were hitting the cable and I didn't want it to chafe through, so I really bent it up. But you can see, if I hold it here with my thumb, they're extremely strong and very flexible, especially when they're warm. So now I have this nice little gap. Let me bend this one up a little bit. Uh, so the cables pass in. This is all protected. Really, really well built. Um, I've kind of fallen in love with these Blue Sea products. I have a few odds and ends from them. But these MRBFs, marine rated battery fuses, uh, this is just a standard bus, um, which is busman fuse, but they make this block that works with it. And the quality is really high. Really impressed with it. This is a lot cleaner looking now. I'm super happy. I can expand. I can add something else. I, I may eventually in the future add a third charger, but that's going to be a project for a different video. These cables run through some conduit under the truck, some electrical conduit. This is heater hose or radiator hose, and it's super durable and very flexible. And I use that to kind of protect the cables. Those cables run through this hose all the way down underneath the truck. It runs underneath comes up through the bed comes out right here and then you have these ends. Alright, let me show you the receptacle which I like and dislike. Since I have the camper off makes it a whole lot easier to get in here. No leaks, no problems with it. It's worked out really well. When I do pull the plug out, this center section right here has a tendency to come with it. Um, and it's because it's not held in there in any way except for some detents. So it just kind of like clicks into place. So what I found is when I pull the plug out, I have to really wiggle it to get it to walk out or else this whole thing tr tries to come out with it. You can see how this one's popped out just a little bit. This one, I push back in. So if you watch, I'll push it in and it seats in. So these do, these center sections do come out a little bit. However, they've worked extremely well. I do wish that they provided a plug cover for the other end, that three prong side. But uh, I don't think I would do anything different. This is, if I needed to go much higher amperage, I would have to use Anderson connectors, but this worked out really well. In the last video, I had used the screws that were provided with this kit. That went right into the Asdell, which did not work. Um, it held for a little while, but basically the first time I pulled the plug out, uh, it ripped out. I ended up getting some countersunk machine screws to go through. So it's super cramped in here, but you can see I have the nut on the other side. I used a washer and a nylock. It comes through and it hasn't moved since I put it in. So pretty happy with this whole setup. 
I'm really happy with this charging system. It's been about 15 or 20,000 miles. It's provided nearly all of our power. We still have a couple hundred watts of solar on the roof, and I do plan on upgrading that in the future so that we can boondock longer without having to drive. But the biggest issue I was having was the breakers that were here kept tripping, and now this solves it completely. So if I had to do the whole project over again, I would just start with these fuses and skip the breakers. Of course, the downside is that I don't have an on-off switch. I can install an inline switch, but I think I'm just going to get covers for those plugs. We almost never take the camper off, so it's not really critical. I'm going to continue looking at Blue Sea products. I think they're really innovative and really good quality. I'm going to have a video coming out fairly soon, hopefully in the next month, that goes over some of the additional upgrades I'm making right now with the batteries, the cabling, the charging system. If you guys are interested in checking this out, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. I'd highly recommend it. I, I really can't find anything else in the market that's of better quality. I did find some other fuse systems like this, but they didn't have the cover like this and the quality did not appear to be nearly as good. I can also leave a link to that down below and you guys can compare and contrast the two. They also sell one fuse and two fuse models of this. They're all rated for 300 amps and you can use up to a 300 amp fuse in it. I used the three fuse model for this project because I kind of needed it. In the camper, I'm gonna be using some of the single fuse blocks, which I'll show you in a future video. So I think that's all I have for you right now. This is just a quick update. Uh, I'm spending most of my time working on upgrades and other things like tires. I did get new tires on the truck. If you have any comments or thoughts about this project or what you guys use for fuses in your engine bay, I'd really like to hear it down in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever we release a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.